So look, if you want to grow your wealth, your income, and increase the amount of time off, then these are the shortcuts that can help. Welcome to the Wealth Creation Podcast. Hi, and welcome to the podcast. My name is Dan Latto. So in this podcast, we're going to talk to you about my favorite business book of all time. And when I say business book, um, I mean like wealth creation, business, all of that kind of thing. Because there is no one book that do, does it all. And so this is actually one of the problems that I find most people have. They read lots and lots of books, but they're all kind of a little bit generic. And so whilst that's okay, because you need generic information and knowing about generic wealth, that's useful too. You've actually got to deep dive into subjects a little bit more than just having a generic knowledge. Generic knowledge doesn't do anything for anybody, quite frankly. So you've got to find a way of deep diving. So I'm going to give you some examples, but let's just like get it straight out of the bat. The best book, if you were to ask me, what's the best book of all time that will help me towards financial freedom? It's got to be Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It's one of the books that I started on. I've already started investing uh, before I even read that book. But when I bought that book, it helped me gain more clarity that actually I was on the right path. I'd already done the calculations. I'd done the numbers on properties a billion times. And we're just about to start up and start buying more properties outside of the UK. And again, I'm looking at lots and lots of properties and we're running the numbers a million times. And we're like, why are more people not doing this? Why is this property available at 40 grand? I'm just going to pay 400 euros a month. What what have I missed? What's the mistake? You know, we're, we're literally going to be earning £200 a month on a 15 grand down. And I keep comparing uh, real estate with stocks and shares. And I keep looking, yeah, BT's down and it's really cheap right now. So the dividend will be high and all that kind of thing. It's, you're still not going to get the same return. You know, if I put 15 grand into, let's say, legal and general paid, I think, 7% yield last year. So I put 15 grand into legal and general and that paid a 7% yield. Let's just do the calculation on it. And this is, this is what I mean. You've got to start deep diving and start doing the research for yourself because reading is just one way traffic. If all you're doing is read, 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 then it's actually not going to work very well for you because you've got to do, 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 do. And most people are reading and not doing. Uh, so let's just do, um, 7% yield is, um, so 15,000 pounds plus 7% is a thousand and fifty pounds. Now, actually, that's not bad, is it? That's a thousand pounds back on 1500, sorry, 15,000 pounds. So that's really good. But I could put 15 grand into a property and now I'm actually getting, it's actually about 220, but let's call it 200. Uh, times uh, 12, I'm now getting £2,400. So I'm actually doubling my return. So the yields are much, much better. And I really struggle on buying into property, uh, buying into stocks and shares when you compare them to property. But the only reason I can do this and be confident about making those decisions, I still have a little bit of unconfidence, by the way, and I still think that I should have some money in stocks and shares for liquidi- uh, liquidity, I couldn't say it. But when you're talking about you know, which which business book do I buy? Well, what do you mean, which business book? Are you talking about leadership? Are you talking about marketing? Are you talking about how to recruit somebody? Are you talking about how to sell something? Like, they're completely different facets of a business. So when you go, oh, the best business book ever is Grant Cardone's Be Obsessed or Be Average, or 10X, let's say. 10X is a great book. Highly recommend both of those books, Be Obsessed or Be Average, or 10X is awesome. But 10X only has a part of a puzzle. So there is no one business book that's going to get you the results that you actually need in life. It's just not. So there are several books that you need to really get hold of. We've mentioned a couple already. So we talked about Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Basically, anything Grant Cardone has written, you should read. Anything uh, Robert Kiyosaki has written, you should read. Stay off uh, anything Donald Trump has written. <laughs> Uh, because it's just made up, doesn't write them himself, and I'm really not convinced uh, that he's an honest guy in any way, shape, or form. Um, something like 50 lies a day, if, if you look at the, since his presidency started, something like that. I suppose it depends on who you ask, doesn't it? But you've got to start looking at, you know, what's your problem? What's the biggest problem you've got right now? Like, and there's two sides to this. The first one is, okay, I'm just starting out, I haven't got a clue. Great. So now you need generic information about building generic wealth. Cut your costs, 
increase your income, buy assets that are just going to generate you more income over time. Great. That's nice and generic. Everybody knows that, hopefully. Oh, you do by now. So, because I've just told you. So that's number one. Get lots of generic books. Rich Dad, Poor Dad is perfect for that. Millionaire Next Door, another really good book. The guys that wrote that book weren't millionaires. They wrote the book, The Millionaire Next Door, which talks about average millionaires and how they became millionaires. And they became millionaires, which I thought was quite funny. So good generic books. And then you've got to start delving in. So, like, for example, there's a book called um, uh, The Empty Raincoat, who's the uh, author. It's Mark McCormack, maybe. That's an awesome book. It's a business book. And it's really about sales and business growth and marketing, really. But it's really about business growth. An awesome book. Go get that one. It's, it's probably an old book by now. But I learned concepts in that book, uh, which just blew me away at the time. So, but again, you know, what is the problem that you've got by now? Well, my problem is I can't get clients um, picking up the phone and phoning me. Great. So is it marketing that you then need? Uh, basically anything by Russell Brunson would serve you very, very well. Uh, anything by, uh, Frank Kern would do you very, very well. Those sort of books would lead you very well. So that's, that's marketing. But what about once you've got somebody on the, on the phone? Well, I can't close and, and I'm getting people now phoning me, but I'm not very good at closing the call. Okay, great. So anything by Grant Cardone on selling would do you very well and listening to podcasts and listening to the audio versions of his books as well. It just depends where you are in the, in the whole like circle of where do you want to get to it. Like sometimes you might come full circle. You've, you've gone through marketing, you've gone through sales, and now you're generating cash. And yeah, you had some generic information. Now you want to get um, and delve straight, straight down more into actual wealth. So uh, like property books, I really struggle on property books because I haven't actually read any property books. Uh, all of our experience comes from experience basically uh and there's some right tossers out there who've got books uh and we just wouldn't recommend them at all uh people in stripy shirts uh avoid like the plague in my book uh in my view so um <laughs> so uh but you know property wise what aspects of property like do you want to do buy to let do you want to do hmos do you want to do rent to rent so you've got to start identifying which people you want to start following in terms of that. Do you want to become a property sourcer? Um, in which case, you should sign up for my free training course. So, which one there? And what about stocks and shares? Like, Benjamin Graham, you should read. Um, and also, anything by Warren Buffett, you should read. Because, like, who's... who's Like, by the way, uh, uh, Benjamin Graham, Warren Buffett, everything he's learned has learned from Benjamin Graham. Okay, so buy that book. And then also buy the Warren Buffett books. But again, it depends on what it is that you're looking for. You've got to have some generic information to lead you onto the right path. And then when you're on the right path, you've got to start understanding how to best use that money to invest in. And so when we talk about wealth creation, you know, what about mindset? Like there's lots of different books on mindset. And any NLP type books, I guess I'll have to mention some Tony Robbins books. Can't stand the guy these days. Um, but, um, Obviously, you know, the Tony Robbins stuff definitely helped me 20 years ago. And if you're first starting out on mindset, there's nothing like actually going on an NLP training course and becoming NLP qualified like I have, because that will open up the world and you'll be like, oh, wow, I didn't know this, uh, which is really powerful. That has been, you know, when we talk about, you know, what aspect of my learnings has helped, NLP has probably been 15, 20% out of all the different aspects aspects sales marketing property wealth return on investments uh, recruitment everything you know nlp is like the glue that sticks it all together so i'd highly recommend that but again it depends where you are in the whole scheme of things because if if you're in a really bad place right now nlp is going to be awesome for you if you if you decide to listen to it or read it if you're in a great place right now nlp is probably not for you like, actually, you're probably really confident. And now is the time to start reading books on investing. Because when you're fully confident, that's when mistakes can happen. Because you think you, you, you know, you control the world. And I see and speak to many, many people who've had that situation. They go, Oh, no, no, no. I don't need to invest in anything. My business is going so well. That's where all my money comes from. And then 10 years later, I don't have a business. It went bust and I didn't invest in anything because they were so confident. 
confident, as Bill Gates said, confidence is a bad teacher. So if things are going really, really well for you right now, you've got to fix the roof while the sun is shining, which basically means while you've got the cash flow coming in, you've got to move the cash flow into something that if your business goes under, you've got something else to replace it, like passive income, wealth through stocks and shares, property, Bitcoin, which isn't investing, by the way, it's gambling, Forex, which isn't investing, it's gambling, uh, gold, doesn't generate an income, therefore no good for me. I've, I don't own any gold. Um, I can't, I can't pay for food with gold. I remember seeing something, by the way, a couple of weeks ago, and it was instead of buying a Big Mac, buy shares in McDonald's, and you can only eat at McDonald's uh, off the dividends that McDonald's pays. Now McDonald's only pays two and a half percent anyway, so it's really low. But I liked that as a concept. Yeah, like McDonald's isn't great for you anyway, but if you want a Big Mac, that's great. You need about £20,000 invested, uh, 2.5%. Let's do the maths. If I put, oh, let's just do a £1,000. A £1,000 plus 2.5% is 25 quid. There you go. I can probably have two McDonald's meals a year off those dividends. I love that as a concept, by the way. Uh, there's a couple of people that, a couple of companies I really, really detest British Gas. British Telecom. I'm going to go buy some shares in those guys because um, I hate them. Absolutely hate them. And I just think it's really nice for companies that you hate to pay you. Um, even if it's a grand on each one, um, let's have a look and see what the British Telecom shares dividends are like. British Telecom dividend history. Let's have a look at that. Um, so 2000 oh, as a percentage we want it doesn't tell us um let's just find this because I, I you know i like to know about this so dividend dates i don't know if, if it'll tell us on the um on the on the website I'll tell you what i'm gonna do let me just pause the recording and go find it because I, I like the idea of this let me just pause this Okay, so I think I got this right. So I was just looking at a 30-year dividend history. Uh, and actually, the current dividend yield for the BT Group as of August 28, 2019 was 13.72%. The reason why it's so high as, as that is because their share price has plummeted, uh, which means, you know, do you think BT is going to go bust? If so, never buy them. But if you think BT is going to come back, which I probably do, now's a good time to buy those dividends, uh, buy those shares, get high dividends. But as the share price increases, the dividends will decrease. As share prices uh, go down, they often increase the dividend payment to stop people selling them, um, like as a protection uh, to keep the, the money in the business. But I love that idea of BT paying me. I can't stand the B BT company. It should be broken up, disbanded, shouldn't be allowed to be called British. And it's the same with British Gas. Um, I just, you know, shouldn't be allowed to be called British. Um, they're just ripping people off left, right and centre. And people... I, I spoke to my parents a couple of days ago. They got a quote from the gas board for a new boiler. The gas board, in their mind, is British gas. It's not the gas board anymore. It's a private, you know, it's a publicly traded company uh, with boards of directors and shareholders. I mean, yet they still call it the gas board. It drives me mad. Anyway, I love that idea. But it depends on where you are in terms of what books you need. Like, you know, if you, if you want a book on health, right, what's the best health book? Well, it depends. Are you a vegan? Do you like yoga? The book of vegan and yoga principles, I'm sure it exists. That would probably be the best book for you, but not one on how to barbecue and be fit. Do you know what I mean? So you've got to start narrowing down exactly what it is that you're looking for. Um, and then you can then determine which books you want to then deep dive into. So look, I hope that's useful for you. Um, I've got lots and lots of favorite books. If you before I moved to Spain, because I got rid of a lot of my books, but I had bookshelves and bookshelves and bookshelves of books. And I do regret getting rid of them, actually. I should have brought them all over with me, but it just weighed so much. There were so many books. Um, so I decided to get rid of them. But I would be going back to some of those books, because some of the older books are definitely, definitely relevant right now. So, look, I hope that's useful for you. I hope that you get some use out of that. I'd love to know what your favourite business book or wealth creation book is. If you let me know in the comment section, that would be awesome. Other than that, I'll catch up with you in the next podcast. My name's Dan Latter. Take care. 
Hey, it's Dan here. Thank you for listening. Really appreciate each and every one of you. Please click like or subscribe to the entire podcast.